Welcome back to Anton's class. This is your human rights anthropologist. And today, I would like you to venture with me to India. We're going to discuss an ancient sunken city off the coast of southern India, the state of Tamil Nadu. Yes, so let's go back in time and discover this ancient Atlantis of sorts. What happened to these people that lived here? How did this city get swallowed up by the sea? Well, let's find out. Back in 2004, during that really terrible tsunami that hit the Indian Ocean, tourists in the town saw granite boulders as the sea receded. So you know before a tsunami hits, the sea level usually recedes, right? And they saw these ancient, these boulders, and they, they thought they looked like, the way they were aligned, the structures looked man-made. Well, ten years later, scientists have discover, discovered ruins of an ancient port at this site. A team of divers, geologists, and archaeologists from the National Institute of, of Oceanography, the NIO, found ruins of one of the six shore temples, which, according to legend, were submerged. So, there are legends from this region of Tamil Nadu that speak of an ancient continent and of ancient Tamil civilization and that at one point they were submerged. If you guys would like me to do an entire video on the ancient submerged continent of the Tamil people, please go ahead and comment below. I can do that for you. But right now I'm just sort of going to briefly mention it. And some believe, some legends believed that this continent was an actual continent and it connected India and Sri Lanka to Madagascar, um, which is of course part of Africa and the Indian Ocean though, and connected all the way to Australia, kind of like this triangle pizza shape thing, pizza slice. At one point, of course, this was inundated and it completely eroded and submerged this ancient continent. Whether or not you believe there was a continent there, which some people call Lemuria, um, we know for a fact that India was in fact con connected to Sri Lanka by a land bridge. And this sunken city, these ruins were discovered on that land bridge between India and Sri Lanka. So we know that the Tamil people had a very extensive history, have a very extensive rich culture that dates back thousands of years and if you would like to know more about the Dravidian people the Tamil belong to the Dravidian group of people please go check out that video I have an entire video on that I also have a video on the Indus Valley civilization which was the Dravidian speaking civilization which was completely indigenous to the Indian subcontinent so anyways getting back to this discovery. Um, again, they believe it dates between 1100 and 1500 years ago. But what I find interesting is that some of the blocks that they discovered are typical of the Sangam period of Tamil, which is between 300 BC and 200 AD. So let's say they date to half between 300 BC and 200 AD. That's 2000 years ago. That's much older than 1100 years ago, right? So... It's interesting. Are they 1100 years old, 1500, 300 BC, 2000, you know, 2000 years old? One other interesting thing, which even makes this more perplexing to me, is that history of sea level patterns show that sea levels were lower around 3500 years ago. So if sea levels were lower at 3500 years ago, to where people could actually live on that land that is now submerged and build structures, wouldn't that indicate that these structures are actually much older? That they are 3,500 years old or older? The reason I'm bringing this story up as your human rights anthropologist is to speak on what impact this story could have for today's world. What can we learn from this ancient story of this submerged city? Well, as we all know, sea levels are rising today. It is projected that by the year 2050, major coastal cities around the entire world will be affected by sea level rise. So, cities such as Kolkata, Mumbai, and Dhaka in India, as well as Gongzhou in China, and in the U.S., cities like New York and Miami. Imagine these very 
heavily populated cities, which are projected to get even more populated throughout the next decades, imagine all of these people being displaced. Imagine the refugee crises this will create, right? Climate change crisis. Refugee crisis is created through climate change and rising sea levels. So the reason I'm bringing this city, this topic up about this ancient sunken city in India is not just for your entertainment. Yes, that's part of it, but it's also to learn a lesson. We should look into the past and see that climate change affected people in the past and is going to affect people in our present and in our future. So the question remains, what are we going to do about it? What can be done about it? One thing that we can do is to really prepare. We have to really prepare for these dis displaced humans that are going to be fleeing these coastal cities to find refuge inland. That's up to governments to really talk about and to decide and to prepare for. What can you do as an individual when it comes to climate change and mitigating the 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 costs and the the effects of climate change? As an individual, what you can do is small, but it will have an impact. Minimize the amount of waste you have. You reuse. So minimize the amount that you're purchasing. Because everything you purchase obviously was manufactured, which has waste, which creates, uh, which also used, created greenhouse gases in the factories to create these products. So try to reuse as much as possible. Try to minimize your amount of consumption. In a capitalist world that we live in, they tell us to consume and consume and consume, which is actually part of the problem and is bad for the environment. Okay, so you want to minimize the amount of consumption as much as possible. We need to have a cultural shift from a culture of consumption to a culture of preservation and a culture of recycling and reusing and reducing. So I want to mention this as well because this is very important. Corporations are the primary contributors to climate change and environmental degradation. So you as an individual, you can do your part, but until we hold corporations accountable, then there's not much we can do on the small scale. These corporations need to be held accountable because they are the primary risk uh, causers of environmental degradation and climate change. They are the ones who are holding the keys, so to speak, to help us mitigate these terrible climate consequences. So we need to haul, hold or, um, corporations responsible. So yes, I'm calling out corporations and I'm calling out capitalism, which actually is sustained by degrading the environment. So thank you so much, guys. I didn't want to go on too long with this video. If you enjoy this sort of content, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, comment below, engage, be kind, be respectful, disrespect, deletion. You will be deleted if you are disrespectful. Anyways, guys, I'm all out now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, subscribe, like, share, and engage. Um, thank you. Have a wonderful day.